What is up everyone, welcome to Panfro Games, and they're covering how to play Venusaur in Pokemon Unite. And before we begin, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and check out my other Pokemon Unite videos after this. So Venusaur is a ranged special attacking Pokemon, has incredibly high offense, but very low stats besides the scoring, which is pretty decent. Very squishy, not a lot of HP, very slow, so not a lot of mobility, and no support ability, so this Pokemon has no way to lock down an enemy and make sure they can't do anything. However, Venusaur's range is really incredible, especially with Solar Beam, and this Pokemon has the best sniping in the game. They're definitely not an easy Pokemon. I would actually rate their difficulty as Expert instead of Intermediate, because this Pokemon is like an artillery mage. You need to be at distance at all times from your enemy, or you can easily get locked down by some CC and then taken out because you don't really have a lot of HP or mobility. Luckily, we have the perfect item build that will try to assist in this matter. And let's dive into the move overview for Venusaur. Starting off with Venusaur's ability, Overgrow. When the Pokemon is at a low HP, the damage it deals is increased. So you do get a bonus of your damage when you are pretty low on your HP. And when Overgrown is activated, you'll have a small little leaf go above your head for a moment, which will tell you that you have activated Overgrown. Venusaur's basic attack becomes a boosted attack with every third attack, dealing increased damage. This boosted attack also pulls opposing Pokemon inwards between the user's vine. This move does special attacking damage, which is great for Bulbasaur as he is a special attacker. And the pull in from the Vine Whip is fantastic, especially in the early game laning. This will allow you to commit some kills that you probably would have gotten otherwise. At level 1, Bulbasaur can learn Seed Bomb, which is a 6 second ranged attack. Hurls a large seed at the designated area, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. So Seed Bomb is a pretty solid move, however it does not do too much damage and most opponents will just not stand in the area effect. And it does not put a dot over them which is a damage over time while they leave it. So it's definitely the weaker move of the two but the cooldown is a lot better than Razor Leaf so you'll be using this move more often. But Razor Leaf will be your bread and butter move for getting kills in lane. Razor Leaf is a 9 second ranged attack. Launches many sharp edge leaves in quick succession of attacks, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. Razor Leaf is an incredible laning move for Bulbasaur and can make him a complete threat. It has incredible range, does tons of damage if an enemy gets caught in it for the full duration, and it's amazing for sniping your opponent's lanes, uh, creeps, or confirming your creeps. Also amazing uh, using Razor Leaf to get Vespa Queen and the combies as well because you're going to do so much damage to them and hit the entire group that you can easily steal them from the, your opponent also while hitting them too however with this move you want to make sure you're not going near your opponent or you'll end up dead because bubble sword does not have a lot of mobility and this is really a ranged artillery attack so you want to be in the outskirts of a fight and only come in if you need to confirm a kill with an auto attack, but Razor Leaf will make it so you can poke from a far distance. At level 5, you can replace Seed Bomb with either Sludge Bomb or Giga Drain. Sludge Bomb is a 6 second range attack. Hurls unsanitary sludge to the designated area, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon in the area effect, leaving them poisoned and decreasing their movement speed and special defense for a short period of time. When you upgrade this move, it increases this move's area of effect. This move is incredible, and I will always recommend picking this move over Giga Drain. It does incredible amount of damage if you can hit an opponent. It can hit multiple opponents at once as well because it's an AoE move. It lowers their special defense and their speed, so it's easier for Venusaur to hit them with their other attack. And it's just great for team fights overall. Plus, bonus, if a Pokemon is poisoned, they cannot score goals until they're unpoisoned. So it does have a little bit buffer as a defensive move as well. If you suddenly die and then you poison them with the Sludge Bomb, they actually have to wait a couple seconds before they can score because they're taking ticks of damage over time. And those ticks of damage could be what saves you the game. So I always recommend Sludge Bomb. It is just a phenomenal move. The other move is Giga Drain, which is a 7 second recovery move. Drains HP from opposing Pokemon in the area effect, dealing damage to them and restoring the user's HP when it hits. Also reduces the damage the user receives for a short time. When upgraded, increases the amount of HP this move restores. So I really don't like this move because honestly, you do not do a lot of damage. 
You do not recover enough HP to really warrant picking this over Sludge Bomb. The damage reduction sort of doesn't really work. I have not really noticed. Because the issue with Venusaur as a playstyle is... This move does not have that big of a range. So you got to get fairly close to the Pokemon in order to get Giga's range to really work. And Venusaur wants to be as far as possible on the outskirts of a fight. And Giga's range is sort of the exact opposite of that philosophy. And it's not a move that's going to burst down an enemy and really show off your incredible special attack stat. So I just highly don't recommend this move unless they somehow buff it in the future. At level 7, Venusaur can choose between Solar Beam and Petal Dance. Petal Dance is 11 second AoE attack, scatters petals around the user, increasing the movement speed for a short period of time, and dealing damage over time to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. When upgraded, increases his move's area effect. So Petal Dance is sort of a viable move because it does allow Venusaur to have increased movement speed and just be by near the opponents, you're going to be doing damage over time, which is pretty cool. And the circle is actually quite generous when upgraded. However, currently at the moment, Petal Dance does not fit too well with Venusaur's kit as Venusaur is pretty squishy overall, has a low endurance stat, and cannot really take a lot of hits. So running up to an opponent and using Petal Dance just does not really seem to be great. And I know what they were trying to do is do a Petal Dance Giga Drain combo as a build but currently in the state of the meta this is just not where venusaur really excels where venusaur excels at is using solar beam which is a 10 second ranged attack blast a bundled beam of light dealing damage to opposing pokemon in the area of effect when upgraded it reduces this move's cooldown by a second solar beam is an incredible move as this move does tons of damage allows venusaur to snipe pokemon off screen which is incredible you can take out targets including zapdos and dreadnought from off screen you can use the l button to see further from your character and however you cannot shoot while using the l button but you can aim and then see oh they this is where my target is and then aim and shoot and you'll probably be able to hit them this makes Venusaur an absolute threat, especially when trying to secure Zapdos, as Venusaur has the best ability to steal it out of any Pokemon in the game, as he can be the furthest away and take objectives. Not only does Solar Beam do a ton of damage, it can hit multiple Pokemon in a row as it goes through targets and it goes off screen. So Pokemon who are running away from you may be caught in the blast and totally obliterated. And the damage is so high, it can kill swishy characters like Cinderace and Greninja in a blast if they are at half health or less. So definitely want to always be spamming Solar Beam. And I will say this is the hardest move in his kit to use, which makes, which in my opinion, makes Venusaur an expert level character. As you have to aim Solar Beam, it does take some time for it to shoot, like a good second since you hit the button. And then it has to travel across the screen. And there is a predictable line where it's going to go so the enemy can potentially dodge it if they're good enough. But if you are good at using Solar Beam, you will be a great Venusaur main. Venusaur's Unite move is Verdant Anger. Launches a giant seed towards the designated area. The seed then splits apart, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon in the area effect and decreasing their movement speed for a short time. The damage on this move is incredible. And as you can see, I sniped the Zapdos and got through their team with the damage boost and then Solar Beam the rest of the team. Honestly, it does incredible burst damage can steal objectives very easily, and can wipe out the entire team. So highly recommend saving this for a Zapdos move if you're within the three minute mark. And using your Solar Beam and Verdant Anger at the same time will be phenomenal for your Venusaur play. And now for our item build. So for Venusaur, I recommend going Wise Glasses, Focus Band, and Shell Bell when going for the Solar Beam and sludge bomb build that we are doing today and wise glasses is a phenomenal item always a must-have on special attackers as it's just a raw percent increase to your special attack focus ban because we are really we are not tanky we are squishy we need defense we need that special defense and we get some hp regen after taking enough damage so this is great to add some more sustain to venusaur and just general taking this especially in the landing phase when you're going to be constantly getting attacked by enemies you're going to really want that extra bulk so you can survive and confirm your kills and last but certainly not least is shell bell 
which is a phenomenal item as it also increases your special attack. So you're going to do more damage with your solar beams. And then you get the cooldown reduction, which means you're going to get off more solar beams and more sludge bombs being more aggressive. And with Shell Bell, you actually recover some of your HP back based on your special attack. So with two special attack raising items, your solar beam is going to do a lot of damage. And off of that solar beam, you're going to recover a good amount of HP. So we have two HP recovery items here with Focus Band and Shell Bell, and then two special attack raising items with Wise Glasses and Shell Bell, and then the cooldown reduction with Shell Bell. So I think this is the perfect kit if you're going to try to play a bit bulky range attacker Venusaur. You could switch out this focus band if you aren't a big fan of just the raw defensive increase. You can go for Buddy Barrier, which it will instead increase your HP. This item will also give you a shield for you and your ally at 40% of their max HP, which is pretty great as well. So I can see Buddy Barrier being on this build. Special attack specs is pretty interesting. I wouldn't recommend this item too much unless you're going for a full scoring build. But I don't think this is where Venusaur really excels at. And now for our battle item. So there's actually some solid items we can use for Venusaur. So I do recommend using a Jack button as well. This is always going to be a recommended in every Pokemon just because blinking is incredible. Gets you out of uh, before you get hit by CC. Gets you through walls. Just a phenomenal move overall. But I can see X speed being used because Venusaur is pretty slow. And increasing your speed so you can get into battle faster, so you can re reposition your solar beams better. I can see this being a very vital, viable item as well. And X attack is pretty solid as well because this does increase your special attack. And this will also increase your damage from your solar beam and sludge bombs. So since you are at range, this does give you the luxury of using these items and really planning on how to use them at best. So I think you do have some flexibility in the battle item slot. In the early game, Bulbasaur is going to have to use Razor Leaf to try to win lane. And Razor Leaf is an incredible move, and it's sort of the reason why you're going to be playing this Pokemon in the early game. It's because Razor Leaf allows Bulbasaur the ability to steal farm quite easily from a far distance, and even do massive damage to his enemies from a far distance. So Bulbasaur really enjoys someone who can stun the opponent and keep them locked down. So Pikachu in this case is pretty solid. Someone like a Snorlax is phenomenal. So they can use Tackle and Stun them. And then you can get even more Razor Leaf hits onto them. You're not going to do too much necessarily Seed Bomb. But Seed Bomb is your other attack. And it can work well if the enemy happens to get locked down. And then you can use Seed Bomb to finish them off. But Razor Leaf is going to be your major poking tool. And how you're going to try to win lane. And honestly... A good Razor Leaf user is going to be a phenomenal player. It is not an easy move because you do have to be out of your auto attack range to best utilize it in my opinion. And you got to be really good at spacing. And in this game, there's a lot of Pokemon that can dash into you and try to execute you, which is terrifying. However, if you can keep your distance and hit them some Razor Leafs, hit them with some Vine Whips and pull them into you so they are stunned for a second and mess up their positioning, you can do tons of work into a lane. When Venusaur enters the mid game, you're going to have Sludge Bomb and hopefully Solar Beam if you farmed well in lane. Sludge Bomb is going to do tons of damage over time and it's great for capturing positions as you're going to do AoE damage over time on a point. And especially when you hit them on a goal with it, you're just going to be doing constant damage over and over and over. Once again, this move is great for defending as you cannot score if you are poisoned. And when you have Solar Beam, you immediately become one of the biggest threats on the field. And you got to start playing in a way where you have the ability to steal objectives. Because of Solar Beam's incredible sniping ability, you can steal objectives. But also, because Sludge Bomb is a damage dealing over time move, you can steal objectives like Dreadnought quite easily. Because even if you're not currently attacking it, the Sludge Bomb Poison can take it down. And if you get the last hit with the Poison, this will count for your team which makes Venusaur a vital Pokemon for securing objectives in the game. In the late game, your goal will be to, one, secure Zapdos with Solar Beam or your ultimate move as you do tons of damage and you have crazy amounts of range of both moves, and two, is to poke the opponents with Solar Beam to make them as weak as possible before they actually enter the fight or trying to take out any stragglers with Solar Beam. So this is like you're a sniper rifle, and especially if you can shoot them down mid lane when they're coming to the Zapdos, you can get tons of hits as well. And if you ever get in trouble, your ultimate ability will give you a second life with the movement speed and will slow down all the enemies nearby. 
making it so that it's easier for you to land sludge bombs and solar beams. So Venusaur is an absolute monster when used in the right hands. He has this crazy ranged attack and he does massive damage. But he is hard to use as he is slow and does not have a lot of scoring. Well guys, thanks for watching my Venusaur guide. And I hope this increases your Venusaur game. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and check out my other Unite videos. Peace out and have a great one.